Hello everyone. In this video, I wanted to show you a few things about the graph editor. So I'm going to go to animation editors and graph editor. And I just really wanted to talk about tangent handles. So I'm going to go to this translate why I was doing this uh, bouncing ball video. And I uh, wanted to show some more specifics about tangent handles and what they mean and what you can do with them, right? So I've selected one where the ball is reaching the top of this. I'm going to press F on the keyboard. And right now, just so you know, this tangent handle is unified. So if I move one side, I'm going to move the other, right? And I've also have it set where the tangent weights are unlocked, right? If I lock them and I try to select this and move it out, it won't. They're unified, but you can see this little black bar here means that I can't drag this handle out and I can't change the weight of that tangent handle. So if I select this free tangent length, I can select that tangent handle and move it out. So that's how that can kind of be locked. The other thing I can do is I can break the tangent handles, but for the bouncing ball, this wouldn't do any good because I need these to be what are called unified. So they're together. And if I move one, the other one moves. If I break them, then when I move one, it doesn't move the other one. Right. And if I move it and then reunify it, they're stuck in that position. Right. So I can break them and then unify that. And I'm going to get that to be fairly flat and then unify them. And there I have flat. Now, if I have them broken, I can select it and choose automatic. It's going to reset those tangent handles and it's going to just flatten them out based on the arc of that curve, meaning automatic. So this is auto tangent handles. It just automatically sets them. And then I can reunify them, right? I can set them back and now I have the ability to work with them independently again. So that's automatic. But when I move it, you see the automatic button turns off. This next one is spline tangents. So spline tangents are essentially, it's going to be similar to this automatic initially because it's going to try to flatten them out and just keep them straight uh, kind of equally distanced from the keyframe, right? So that's this spline tangents. And that's usually what you're using as a lot of spline, automatic or spline. The next one is clamped, but I'm going to go over here to linear tangents and I'm going to set it to linear tangents so I can uh, come back to clamped. When I set it to linear, you're noticing if you were following along with the bouncing ball animation video that I did, you'll notice that the handles point to the direction of the next key. Right? So it's trying to force that linear interpolation. Right, That's what that means. So with it linear at the top of this, it would go up and then it would go down really fast. Right, These would be more linear in nature, but generally linear is if I want something to just travel on a straight line. Right, So I'm going to go ahead and set it back to spline and you see that it kind of resets it there. So when it comes to clamped, Clamped is a combination of the two, of the spline and the linear. So it will behave differently depending on how close the next key is. So there's a couple different things you can do in the graph editor. And one is you can actually go in here and insert a key. So I'm going to bring the playhead to about right here. I'm going to actually bring it to maybe 32, 33. And I'm going to choose the insert key tool and I can click and insert a key right there. Now, as far as clamp tangents go, what's going to happen here with this key close to this one is it's going to try to keep this one as a spline, but it's going to try to set it from the previous key. When it's further away, it tries to keep it as linear. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to clamped. And you can see where this handle acts more like linear because it's trying to point to the previous one. Yet this one is trying to keep this rounded. If I, uh, you know, manipulate that, if I bring that up again and kind of point it there and select that key and again go to clamped, it keeps trying to point to the previous one, which can work in certain cases, but it's trying to round this out. Rather than make the other handle linear to point at this one, it's trying to assume the best of both worlds linear in this direction because the key is further away, but it's trying to round out to kind of keep that nice spline shape for the next one. So it's not aggressively getting to this point and then turning. Now, this isn't what I would want for the bouncing ball, but there are circumstances where I might want something like that, right? So I can kind of get this back here. I can go back to automatic, 
so I can manipulate that again, right? So that's just setting it back to automatic. But again, clamped, I set it and it trying to point that key that's further away to linear, right? With still keeping it a rounded shape based on the previous key. So I use this very sparingly. I usually just use spline or automatic and then just manipulate it by hand. And now to get rid of it, I can just select that key, press delete, and I can set this back to automatic and I've got it back the way it was. I just like to keep them either automatic or spline. Now the other one, the next one is flat tangents and flat tangents allow for you to not have a change in the value. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this and I'm gonna go over to here and I'm gonna change this one, right? And so that flattens out that tangent just like if I needed this flat here, it flattens that out and it makes this a slow in instead of where it's up, right? So it just flattens those tangent handles out. The next one is stepped and I'll hold, hover over it, these step tangents. And what step tangents allow you to do is to hold onto a value until it gets to that next key and then just change it all of a sudden, right? So I'm gonna select that one go to stepped and it's going to hold that value until it gets the next key and all of a sudden it'll change. It'll just jump to that spot. This is really good when you're animating cameras and movement of cameras or you want to simulate a cut from one camera angle to the next. You can set one key, the next key, the camera will just automatically jump to that position when it reaches that key. It's going to hold on to that position and then all of a sudden jump. Not very useful for bouncing balls or other animated things, but there's a lot of uses for that specific type. A lot of people, I see a lot of people like add an additional key here and then all of a sudden add a key here to make it change. But this is a lot easier. You can set a key here, set a key here, set that one to step, and then it will hold on to that value until it reaches the next one, right? And so this last one right here is a plateau tangent. And what that'll do is if I set it to plateau and I set this one or I set both of them to plateau, it will just try to keep them all flat. It's sort of com combining those two, right? But again, I usually set all my keyframes to spline unless I need the linear or I can set it to automatic, right? So spline will usually give me what I need, but I set these to a linear interpolation so that I can manipulate these handles to add that speed as the ball hits the ground and bounces back up. So that's pretty much a lot about these tangent handles. There's some new ones. These two buttons are new in Maya 2020 where you can set the default in tangent type and the out tangent type. So I can just go ahead and click that and set it automatically to spline if I wanted to or I can keep it at auto depending on what I want to do mainly for my animation. Uh, I hope that helps and explains the different types of tangent handles that you can set in Maya.